Welcome back to Bargaining in War. In this lecture, we're going to begin solving games of incomplete information. In particular, we're going to look at a situation where A does not know B's cost for war. And we're going to do this in the simplest way possible, where B can only have one of two different possibilities. B can either have high costs or it can have low costs. B knows that piece of information, but A does not. Everything else is mutually known. So both parties know what the probability of victory is. Both parties know what A's cost for war is. The only piece of information missing for either player is that A does not know B's cost for war. Specifically, the way we're going to look at this is a three-step process. So first, nature is going to choose B's cost for war. And specifically, two different possibilities. B's cost could either be C, B prime with probability Q, or it can be C, B with probability 1 minus Q. And just to keep track of what the notation is here, C, B prime is greater than C, B. So Q portion of the time, B will have high costs, C, B prime. 1 minus Q portion of the time, B will have low costs, C, B. Again, B knows that piece of information. A does not know that piece of information. In the dark, A is going to make an ultimatum demand. So they're going to play the ultimatum game, which is something that we've seen before when we've had the states negotiate with one another. So A is going to demand some value x between 0 and 1. When A is choosing to do this, it does not know whether B has high or low costs. So it is making a demand that will possibly go to a high cost type and possibly go to a low cost type. A does not know that piece of information. Now, finally, the last step is that B accepts or rejects. And our war payoffs are going to be just as they are before with the slight wrinkle that B's cost for war is based off of what was drawn earlier. So if B has high costs, it's going to pay CB prime. If it has low costs, it's going to pay just CB. So that's the setup of the game. We again, to recap, we have nature, which is just this autonomous actor. It randomly chooses whether B has high costs or low costs with that Q1 minus Q distribution. A in the dark makes a demand. B as the high cost or the low cost type. Remember, B is informed then chooses whether to accept or reject. Our method for solving this is relatively similar to what we've been doing before. So there's still going to be a large element of backward induction to what we're doing here, but there are a few wrinkles that we have to iron out. So as usual, we do want to start at the end of the game. We want to start with B's accept or reject decision. Now, part of this is easy because B is fully informed. B doesn't have any uncertainty, so it's not projecting what might possibly be the case. It knows whether it has high cost or low cost type. The trick, though, is that we have to do this two separate times because B could be a high cost type, in which case it might want to take one kind of action, or it could be a low cost type, and it might want to take a different sort of action. So let's split this up into two cases. Let's look at high cost types first. High cost. What is high cost type going to do? Well, if it accepts a demand, we know that its utility for accepting a demand is 1 minus x. If it rejects a demand, then it gets a payoff of 1 minus p minus cb prime. That's its war payoff. And you'll notice that it's paying cb prime because it's a high cost type. It pays that cb prime value. It's higher than the low cost types cost for war. So we need to solve for x here because x is a's demand. We need to put things in terms of x because that's what ultimately a is going to be working itself through. So if we solve for x, what do we get? Well, we just move the x to the other side, We move everything else to the other side, and that's just going to take us to x less than or equal to p plus cb prime. So if x is less than or equal to p plus cb prime, High cost type accepts. Okay, simple as that. Nothing extra to think about when the high cost type 
has a demand. It sees what's going on. It knows its cost for war. It's simply looking at whether accepting that demand is better than fighting a war conditional on having high costs. Nothing too new here. It's going to accept if x is less than or equal to p plus cb, it will reject otherwise. Okay, what about the low-cost type? Let's do the low-cost type. Well, its payoff for accepting a demand is just like the high-cost type. That doesn't change. It's just a demand. They're not fighting a war. If they're accepting it, that's just how much they're getting. It's 1 minus x. What is different is the low-cost type's war payoff. So rather than getting 1 minus p minus cb prime, it's getting 1 minus p minus cb because the low-cost type has low costs. It's paying less in terms of war. So we still need to solve this for x, and if we just move x to the other side and cancel out the ones and do all that good stuff, we get x less than or equal to p plus cb. So if x is less than or equal to p plus cb, low-cost type accepts. Great. Let's quickly visualize what's going on here. Let's draw a 0, 1 interval. We have two different cut points. We have a p plus cb prime and a p plus cb. So let's put both of those values on this number line and see what that's getting us. We have p plus cb prime and p plus cb. Why is it that we have the p plus cb prime to the right of p plus cb? Well, if you remember, cb prime is larger than cb. So when we're adding cb to the value p. That's going to make the cb prime quantity larger overall. So if we look at what we've seen with the solutions for what the high cost type and the low cost type are going to do, what we get is everything to the right of p plus cb prime, our values high cost type is going to reject. Whereas everything to the left is going to be something that the high cost type accepts. Now let's compare that to what we get from the low cost type. The low cost type, because it gets more value from fighting a war because it has low cost, the low cost type accepts fewer demands and rejects more. That's not the high cost, that's the low cost type. So that should make sense. The low cost type has a higher war payoff, so it should be rejecting the demand more often. This is everything that we need to know about B's decision. The question then turns to what A should do. And we can use this information here to inform us what A's optimal choice is. The wrinkle for A, as compared to previous iterations of backward induction, is that A doesn't know for sure what is going to happen after it makes its move. Remember, if we go back up to the top here, nature is drawing B's cost. B is privately informed of that, and A has to make that demand in the dark. A does, however, have some information about what could be the case. A has this prior belief of Q1 minus Q. So it knows that Q portion of the time it's going to be facing a high cost type, and 1 minus Q portion of the time it's going to be facing a low cost type. So the question is, what should A be demanding given this circumstance? Especially conditional on the fact that A can anticipate what the high cost and low cost types are going to do based off of everything that we just drew down there. All right, well, think about three different sets of possible offers. If A demands some quantity to the left of P plus CB, then both types accept. If A demands a quantity to the right of P plus CB prime, 
then both types reject. And in the middle, if A demands an amount between P plus CB and P plus CB prime, here just the high cost type is going to accept, the low cost type is going to reject. All right, well, let's calculate what the utility is for each of these regions and see if we can figure out what demand A makes that maximizes A's payoff. And just like always, we're going to assume that a type accepts when indifferent. So for example, if A were to demand exactly P plus CB, then the low cost type, the demand is right here. The low cost type is indifferent between accepting and rejecting. We're going to assume it accepts with probability one, just like we always do. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the easiest case, which is the situation uh, all the way on the left, where we have both types accepting, okay? So in that region, if x is between 0 and p plus cb, that implies that both accept. And so a's utility is going to be a combination of q portion of the time, the high cost type accepting, which nets a a payoff of x, plus one minus q portion of the time, the low cost type accepting, which is still netting at x, which is just a payoff of x. Easy enough. Now, one thing to notice here is that if you are a, anything in this interval, anything in here is going to be accepted by both types and lead to a payoff of x. So remember that we're thinking about this as a number line representing possible demands x. If you are A, you would never want to demand some amount like this. Why not? Well, both types accept. And if both types are accepting, you're getting a payoff of X. You could instead demand a little bit more and both types would still accept. And if both types are still accepting, you're still getting a payoff of X. You can profitably deviate. You can get a little bit more by demanding a little bit more. And that can't be optimal either, because you could, again, demand a little more, or a little more, or a little more, up until you reach the point P plus CB. So we've already narrowed down what possible demands could be the case for A. Anything less, all the way up to just quite there, but not all the way there, none of those demands can be acceptable, or at least not optimal. Both will be accepted, but they're not optimal for A. I'm going to draw a utility function for A to help diagram what's going on, keep track of everything. So here on the x-axis, we're actually going to have the demand x being made. And on our y-axis, we're going to have the utility function for A as a function of x. And what we've just shown is that for every demand less than or equal to P plus CB, A's utility, well, it's x, so if you demand zero, you're getting nothing, and it's just going to increase linearly until we get to P plus CB. Okay? So again, none of the demands that are less than P plus CB can be optimal, because you can always go slightly higher up this hill and get a little bit more of your payoff. Okay? And just to keep track of what the utility is over here, well, your utility is equal to X, so if X is P plus CB, then A's utility for making that demand is P plus CB. Okay, so that takes care of the lowest, the smallest demands out of A. What about if A is making a larger demand, the largest demands possible? So let's go in this region right here, where now you're making a demand that is greater than P plus CB prime. Well, what we've figured out up here when we were solving for the high cost and low cost types decisions, and what we have mapped out for ourselves down here is that both the high cost and the low cost type reject because A's demands are just so, so large, neither type of B is willing to accept that, and so it prefers to fight. So if X is greater than P plus CB prime, that implies that both reject. And so A, Q portion of the time, is going to be fighting a war against the high cost type, and its payoff for war is P minus CA. And one minus Q portion of the time, it's going to be fighting a war against the low cost type. 
and it will still be getting a payoff of P minus CA because A's payoff for war is not a function of the type it's facing. Whether B has low or high costs, A's payoff for war is the same, and so this is just P minus CA. So what that looks like up here, we have any demand greater than P plus CB prime, it's going to look like this. I do these dotted lines again across. This is a payoff for A of P minus CA. Doesn't matter which demand you make in this region, they're all going to be rejected. And so you're just going to get your war payoff, which is P minus CA. So one thing that we should be noticing here is that, well, every one of these demands that is to the right of P plus CB prime is definitely not optimal because you could instead be demanding P plus CB and getting both types to accept and then enjoying some of the surplus. You might not get all of it because you're not extracting everything that you could have been extracting out of the high cost type. You're just leaving the low cost type indifferent, but you're getting some of the surplus. You're extracting some of that value that is to be had by not fighting a war. And so it is better to make that demand than make a demand that is guaranteed to be rejected. So that leaves us with just a single possibility left. We know that this is still in the running, P plus CB. The other set of possibilities is everything else in this middle region here, where we have now the high cost type accepting and the low cost type rejecting. So let's work through what the utility function for that looks like. So let's look at what happens if we have, if X is between P plus CB and P plus CB prime. Okay, so that's implying that high accepts and low rejects. So what does the utility function for that look like? Well, Q portion of the time, we have the high cost type accepting. Remember Q is representing, if we go all the way back up, Q represents the portion of the time that B is actually this high cost type. So Q portion of the time, we have the high cost type accepting, which means A is getting the demand that it is making. So it is going to receive X for that circumstance. And one minus Q portion of the time, we have the low cost type being around and the low cost type rejects. So A is gonna get more payoff. All right, well, what do we see here? We see that within this region, if you're going to choose an X that is between P plus CB and P plus CB prime, your utility is going to always be increasing in X within that region. Because as long as you don't exceed P plus CB prime, you're still going to keep it so that the high cost type accepts and the low cost type rejects. So if you're going to do that, you might as well extract everything you possibly can out of the high cost type. And everything that you could possibly extract out of the high cost type, well, we see it right here. It's P plus CB prime. If you demand anything less than P plus CB prime, you're not going to get the low cost type to accept as long as you're in this region. And you are not extracting everything that you could out of the high cost type. You're leaving money on the table. So you might as well, if only the high cost type is going to accept, you might as well get the best deal possible out of that high cost type, which means demanding P plus CB prime. So this implies, if you want to do this, best possible demand is x equal to p plus cb prime. So what we've just narrowed down is that everything other than this demand or this demand is not optimal. It has to be that you are demanding either p plus cb or p plus cb prime if you're a. What we have not yet established is where the utility for p plus cb prime as a demand relates to the utility for demand P plus CB. So we haven't filled that in over here. And the reason for that is that it's a little bit complicated. So let's just take a look at comparing this utility to this utility 
when we're making that optimal demand in both cases. So here, if you're having both accepting, then the best way you can do this is to set x equal to p plus cb. That's what maximizes that region. So if you want to make the safe demand, this is the demand that is going to get everyone to accept both the high cost and the low cost type, then you demand p plus cb and both types accept. If you want to make the risky demand, then you're choosing P plus CB prime, in which case you're getting this utility function here. So if we substitute X equal to P plus CB prime, we get Q times P plus CB prime plus one minus Q P minus CA. So if we have the risky demand being greater than the safe demand, then that's going to imply war with positive probability. So let's investigate if that risky demand could possibly be a better option for A than the safe demand. Can this relationship hold? Well, let's do some algebra. We might have to do quite a bit, but we can get there. So let's go ahead and multiply out the Qs. We get QP plus QCB prime plus P minus CA minus QP plus QCA, good old foil, it's our best friend, plus or greater than pl uh, P plus CB. Cool. All right, so can we simplify this? Well, yes, we can. So we have a Q, C, uh, QP there and a negative QP there, and we have a P here and a P here on that side, so those cancel out. So let's just go ahead and reduce this a little bit. We have QCB prime here, we have a plus QCA. Uh, and let's go ahead and move this CA over to the other side so that we get greater than CA plus CB. All right, we can, let's just go ahead and solve for Q. Solving for Q is like saying, hey, if I have a belief, remember that Q, going back up to the top, Q is A's belief that B has high costs. If we solve for Q and we see Q greater than some value, that's saying if I think that B is sufficiently likely to be the high cost type, such that Q is larger than this quantity, then I would prefer the risky demand and I would allow for some positive probability of war. So let's solve for Q. So we need to group the CA and CB prime together on this side. Well, CA and CB are both positive values, so we can just divide that off onto the other side, and we get Q greater than CA plus CB over CA plus CB prime. And you'll notice here, because CB prime is larger than CB, the denominator is larger than the numerator. So this is a value that's between 0 and 1. Q is also a probability, so it's a value between 0 and 1. So if this Q value exceeds CA plus CB over CA plus CB prime, then the optimal demand is for A to make the risky demand of P plus CB prime and have the low cost type reject. So what's going on here to finish this graph is that whether Q is greater than or less than this quantity here, this critical cut point, one of two things is gonna happen. So it could be the case that we have a relatively high probability that B is the high cost type. And so when we draw the utility that ranges between P plus uh, CB and P plus CB prime, that utility ends up peaking above the utility for making the demand P plus CB, in which case your optimal demand, if you're A, this is just your utility function, what you're choosing when you choose your value X is whatever the X is that delivers the highest payoff possible, well, it's gonna be that one. That's what happens when Q is larger than that cut point, Q greater than CA plus CB over CA plus CB prime. And in contrast, if that's flipped, if Q is less than this, then what that is saying is that, in fact, when you draw this utility in, it peaks at a lower quantity. 
And so if you look at what is maximizing A's utility overall, it's now that safe demand P plus CB. So to recap here, to summarize, what we have looked at is a situation where A does not know B's cost for war, and it turns out it may be optimal for A to make a demand that B will reject. And that is specifically going to happen when A is rather confident that B is the high cost type. Remember, Q is representing the probability that a thinks that B is a high cost type. And when Q is relatively large, then A is trying to extract everything it can out of that high cost type. And it knows that by doing that, the low cost type is going to reject. And that's bad. It's going to have to fight a war against the low cost type. But it's worth that risk to try to acquire a little bit more. We call this overall, this is what's known as a risk return trade-off. Risk return trade-off. So when A is making a risky demand, it is rationalizing that the risk associated with fighting a war is worth the return of a larger payoff against that high cost type. It's extracting everything it possibly can out of that high cost type, and that's worth the risk. That wraps up this lecture. And in the next one, we're going to be looking at some comparative statics on this model and see when A becomes more or less inclined to make the risky demand. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Take care.